I wasn't gonna say it with um, a joker makeup on my face <laughs> but we're gonna have a very special session right now right here and that's a coaching session with Pocky Main. Hikaru and I are the official coaches of Pocky for Pockchimps and she's gonna join me now I believe I didn't think I was gonna have this look this was totally not prepared but whenever Pocky is ready I'm so ready right I'm I'm I'm, I'm very <laughs> I'm very ready for this <laughs> hello oh I'm so sorry I had the wrong <laughs> hey, voice no uh, worries I was sure it's on my end because I'm always <laughs> booming I I have a boomer account on my channel because if there's something going on that's on my end <laughs> no 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 this one was on my end how are you I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. You're looking fantastic, by the way. <laughs> thank you so much. I thought for our first coaching session, I need to mm -hmm. impress you. I need to have a unique <laughs> look and show that I'm the coach. I'm the trainer that will get you to Puck Champs Trophy. You're going to win it. Consider myself <laughs> impressed. Thank you so much and thanks a lot for being here earlier too. You were following the stream and it was just a chaotic, a very chaotic collaboration. I love to watch it. I just wanted to support, you know, girl chess squad. I love to see it. You are now one of us. You are one of us and I'm really <laughs> proud of you. Whenever I say it, I just want to make sure that, that you know it and the viewers know it. I praise you because I honestly think you are very impressive. I'm not I'm not giving out compliments like this. <laughs> I'm not like, oh, all of you are amazing and impressive and mind-blowing. No, <laughs> really? you have a natural talent. What Hikaru told you is 100% true, that you pick up things so easily, the patterns that you see, you have been learning chess for a week, one week, and you pick up on checkmate patterns and tactics super quickly. Oh, th like th that kind of comment just motivates me to keep learning, you know? It means a lot coming from obviously two insane chess pros like you guys. Thank you so much. Hikaru is the real, real pro and hopefully I am a real pro at coaching. I, I do a lot of coaching sessions and and I was one of the coaches of Hafu, so I can hope I hope I can do a good job this time too. Oh, I'm hopefully. I'm sure you're gonna be amazing. I feel so lucky to have you guys as coaches. I do wanna say though, like, you know, um still I mean it's not morning for me, but I kinda just woke up having a slow day. I have not played any chess. I just kinda figured, uh, you know, I have like an hour or so free and would love to just learn a little bit from you if that's okay. Obviously, and thank you so much for messaging me. Um, again, uh, I apologize for my look. I'm I'm <laughs> no, promising my, my chess so moves funny. are somewhat more serious <laughs> than this. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I can do a very professional job here. I'm sure. I'm really, really excited. Let oh, me... um, sure. do you have any questions for me prior to our lesson? I don't really know if you had anything planned. Um. Yes, I was going to look at some of the games that you mentioned, if that's okay with you, because you played three games today, as far as I know, and you won each and every one of them, like 100% I... score. <laughs> um, I think it was yesterday. Wait, oh, oh, I'm always so confused yeah, not with time today. zones. Oh, no, it's okay, it's okay. I might have written it wrong, but yeah, last night I oh. played three games, I think... Three or four? So you actually your last I think three I played games. four. No, no, no uh, yeah. My last three or four games, I won them. Okay, Feels that's what good, counts. Man. It doesn't matter. I mean, my game. rating is so <laughs> low, you know. <laughs> but I won, so I'm really, really happy. Let me take a quick look at the games if there's anything we need to improve uh, from those games. Um, but of course, if you have a question, you let me know. Because you probably, if you had any moments in those games where you where you had a doubt, where you weren't sure if your decision mm -hmm. was the right one, those are some of the moments we definitely need to address. And my overall plan, I didn't know it was going to be today our session or some of the upcoming days, but my I plan I mean, I'm was... happy to do another <laughs> session, by the way. When I'm actually sure. streaming, I would love to do that. <laughs> sure. My objective 
uh, for you was that I'm gonna help you understand the gameplay better because I feel like you're mm -hmm. gathering a lot of information. You're solving many puzzles. You already had mm -hmm. a coaching session with Hikaru and of course with Cutie as well. Cutie is a <laughs> very impressive coach. I think she would yeah. improve my look at least. <laughs> no, but uh, I was I was lurking at both coaching sessions to make sure that I'm on the same page and uh, Hikaru and mm -hmm. I have been discussing behind the scenes what to teach you so that we are working as a team to help you and oh, I'm i think so happy to hear that <laughs> of course it's the least i think what's what's very difficult at the start when you are just learning chess is to to understand how you use those tools during your games because for mm -hmm. instance puzzles are moments that are basically winning positions you need to sh you need to search for a winning idea a checkmate a fork a pin that will win a, a piece yeah and those are the moments that will win your games at puck champs too so those are mm -hmm. very important to study and to practice but it's not always that obvious when you're playing your game when is it that you have something mm -hmm. like that so I want to help you understand a little bit better the dynamics of the gameplay and how you can pick up on clues that will tell you that hey Iman there's a winning move here because <laughs> no one will be no one will be screaming at you and there will be no alert box but I want you to develop your own little alarm bell for those in kind my of mind yeah. yes absolutely yes. I do you find that it is kind of difficult for me to feel like I am doing things to get the board to a winning position I feel like generally right now I win by like making small better choices than my opponent until i capture most of their pieces um and either have a queen or can just uh turn a past pawn mm -hmm. into a queen um and then i know how to checkmate from there but i don't really know how to do it otherwise the other thing that i found myself struggling with a bit is i can kind of figure out how to develop castle and then let's say i castle on my king side um, sometimes I get a bit confused about how to develop on my queen side. Mm -hmm. uh, whether like I do knight first and try to get the bishop out, what formation my pawns should be. I often find myself, I don't remember what it's called, but doing that thing where like um, you have one pawn on like two and one on three and one on two and one on three and one, you know what I mean? A pawn like chain in zigzag. When it's, when it's a, oh, you do a zigzag. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. just because I don't really know how else I should be developing them. Sure. Um, but I think you'll see that in my games. I just, oh, I also want to note that uh, usually after the games that I play, I try to look through the very obvious blenders, uh, blunders that very the good. system shows me um, and mistakes like that, which I do recognize I accidentally make sometimes. <laughs> it's great if you look at your games because our own games are some of the best learning tools. So puzzles and learning from your own games, I think, are the two most efficient ways of improving at chess. And of course, having mm -hmm. coaching sessions too, but in between coaching sessions, what you can do is certainly puzzles and playing and learning from your own game. So great that you look at the analysis. It's great that you check for blunders. I see you You didn't only win the last three games or four. It's, it's like, what is it, six in a row? Iman, oh, no, 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 I'm just looking at the final positions real quick, and it, it uh, it's what you said that if you get to an end game, I see that you can convert because you will you will go and create a pass pawn and promote. Mm -hmm. So that's great that uh, that you feel confident about converting by simplifying the position and then trying to create a pass pawn. That's one of the most efficient ways um, to win. Yeah, if you I have feel a piece like it's, mm -hmm, it's like my for sure way of winning, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to sometimes like risking and doing a very aggressive attack early mm -hmm. yeah is there any game in particular among these ones that that you would like to ask about or shall we go for a new one i was gonna simulate a game a pock champ style game i think simulating a game would be great sure. oh my other um i guess kind of issue because I, I started playing chess mainly just via puzzles which are very fun and addicting mm -hmm. um, but when trying to transfer that to actual games I had a bit of trouble because um, I feel like I end up in a situation where I have a bit of like 
decision paralysis, either I'm starting white or starting on black. I think just having either a specific system or opening or even a handful of them uh -huh. that I can only play those and then learn all the possible sequences that stem from them uh -huh. would be really helpful for me. And I feel, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that might be best for Pog Champs too, because most people aren't going to know like all the openings and everything. So it might be better to just master a few uh -huh. as opposed to moderately know all of them. I fully agree with you that we're going to teach you a handful of openings and that should do because um, I know that the more you know about chess, the more you will feel like there's a lot more to learn, but it's never ending. So we, you will never feel like you know everything. I don't feel like I know everything. And I think Hikaru mm -hmm. doesn't feel like he knows everything. So that <laughs> it's kind of like a never ending <laughs> learning process. Yeah. So I think it's important to be fine with not knowing everything. but. It's true that we're going to need to teach you a couple of openings just so that you are mm -hmm. confident at the start of the game and you know what setup you are going for. Sounds good. Amazing. Let me invite you to an analysis board. Uh, hopefully I can set that up and invite you if you are on chess.com live chess. Yes, one second. Yeah, I'm on live chess. Amazing. Inviting you now. Yay. Yay. We did the first step. We are, we are getting there. <laughs> You can see the board, right? Can you move the pieces too? Yeah. Let's, let's just double check it's working fully. Boop. Amazing. Sure. Uh, do you want to have the white or black pieces for our simulation game? I think either is fine. Ideally, maybe you can teach me both sides. Sure. Let's start with you having the white pieces because I know Hikaru already taught you an opening against the Sicilian defense. So the Sicilian defense is this palm push. You mm -hmm. possibly have seen it in the Queen's Gambit. This is what Beth also plays quite quite a lot. Honestly, I don't recall much about openings because I've watched so many videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry. You know what? Um, actually, if if we, we if we want to focus on the gameplay first, I'm mm -hmm. gonna stop testing your openings because um, we could also go about. Firstly, going through the gameplay and how to think, and mm -hmm. then we add the openings. We still have a bit over a month still the competition, so I'm not too worried if you yeah. don't know the lines now. Mm -hmm. You will need to know them when the tournament begins. What I mainly oh, want I can to... memorize. I just need to be told <laughs> what to memorize. For sure. example, when I'm on white, um, yeah. even just at the beginning, I'm like, should I push d4 or e4? And kind of knowing, I guess, the pros and cons, or just choosing sure. yep. an opening to go with most games. I think maybe I would do, uh, just to explain my thought process, mm -hmm. I think maybe I would do e4 just so I can try to get my bishop out, my knight out in two moves, mm -hmm. and then castle very quickly. Um, but I think there are a lot of openings with d4, and I'm not sure if there's a certain one that would be better or worse for me. I think e4 suits you perfectly. I agree with uh, Hikaru's evaluation of your playing style that you should go for something aggressive and attacking because you solve a lot of puzzles <laughs> so your tactical vision will be one of your strengths at the tournament. Okay. Um, and as you said, you can memorize easily so you, got, you can memorize the gambits, the opening lines that we teach you as well as you're putting in tons of effort, which not every participant will do. It's a, I mm -hmm. think, I think uh, <laughs> your hard work, your dedication, your tactical vision and attacking skills, that those will be some of your strengths at the tournament. Those will be the ones that can, that can decide the games in your favor. So E4, let's go for E4. You make it sound so <laughs> cool, tactical vision. <laughs> you do have already a tactical like vision. Like it's something in <laughs> Warzone, like COD Warzone. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. This is what we're gonna do. Forget what I said about the Sicilian or anything. Now we will I actually not watched a video on the Sicilian. <laughs> Sounds quite interesting. We, we will be talking about openings a lot more in future sessions. But for now, we're gonna practice uh, how to think oh. during a chess game. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But if you had done this, is Sicilian, right? Yes. Do I then take space in the center? If you take, I can yes. take, and then my queen is out early? Yeah, I think Hikaru um, wanted you to push that pawn exactly. And then yeah. instead of taking it with the queen, which is an mm -hmm. option. So this exists. It's it's possible to take it with the but queen. But I did hear it's also like, I don't remember the exact sequence of moves, but 
that you can kind of maybe with the horse to c6 or something um it is kind of difficult for white's queen to be out in the middle of the board so early exactly you've got the right conclusion uh, this is possible but it has these drawbacks that the knight will immediately yeah. attack the queen and, and then because start moving and exactly and like touching the same piece twice and that's not good very good you've got it okay. you've got it so hikaru wanted you to push this pawn to then sacrifice the pawn because you're offering a second pawn and when this pawn is taken what mm -hmm. happened to the board is that you have only six pawns versus seven so you have mm -hmm. one pawn less which is I... but i have more control of the center yeah you have more control you are ahead in development because mm -hmm. this pawn is already here the knight is already out so you will be ahead can they laugh black has no development <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> zero none oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so that's why we give up the pawn yes but i i don't want you have to worry too much about the opening we can start from this position because um, okay. We either play this or a different one. I, I just don't want you to worry too much about the opening moves. I want you to follow the opening principles. Can you tell mm -hmm. me what you do at the start of the chess game? What are the principles you need to follow? I know you know them. Yes, so take control of the center when slash if possible, develop your pieces and castle early. Exactly, so I just want you to do that. Develop your pieces, controlling the center and castle mm -hmm. ASAP. That's what we're gonna do. I'm going to make mm -hmm. random moves for black um, as a simulation. Some of them will mm -hmm. be not the ideal moves. And I will want you to, to take advantage of the moves that are not too good. So some of the moves I make will be all right. Other moves will <laughs> not be that good. Okay, question. Yes. So in what situation should I be trying to develop on both sides of the map or... Yeah, of, yeah of you the board, can call sorry. it sorry. Yeah. Um, versus trying to develop mainly on one side so I can immediately castle. Or I guess it would be like this. Mm -hmm. um, or should I do like knight, bishop, bishop, and then castle? Do you get what I mean? Yes, I fully understand your question. What would be your guess? Which one is, which one is the one to aim for first? Because of course you want all of it. You want to do both but which one is priority <laughs> my answer might be bad but i'm gonna be honest i feel like <laughs> in my elo i should just go aggressive <laughs> but um what i have been doing okay i feel like what i've been doing is not what is what my play style should be i feel like i tend to play a bit more defensively where i would bring my knight or i would probably bring my bishop and then my knight and then castle because then it feels like my king is safe i can forget about that and focus elsewhere on the board mm -hmm. being kind of like reassured that my king is fine so you would move show me some of the moves you would come up with then if if that's your conclusion mm. and we will see if that's the right one okay um i don't think i've ever played this specific board but mm -hmm. I do see that I can get a lot of kind of diagonal control, you could say, with my bishop being like here. Mm -hmm. And I get him kind of out of the back line. And then um, I'd probably look to bring my knight out, my other bishop out. I do remember you said that this is good. And that if he pushes this, I can just trade. And I've been doing that in my last few games. It's been panning out pretty well for me. Um, so yeah, probably one of the bishops. Maybe I should have done this one because it's easier. I just mm -hmm. saw quite the opportunity with such a long line yeah. of free green diagonals. Yeah. So let me ask you a, a question um, that's related to this. You said that the mm -hmm. opening principles are to develop your pieces, control the center, mm -hmm. and castle as soon as possible. Where do you want to mm -hmm. castle? Which side? Which I side mean, of the board are you aiming for? I tend to prefer king side. Uh huh. But in this situation, queen side could be very fast. Oh, but also, I guess I'm missing this pawn, so I would want to castle king side. True. Exactly. Very good answer that because you're missing that pawn here, castle queenside wouldn't be that appealing. So mm -hmm. if you're aiming to castle kingside, how can you make that as fast as possible? 
then I probably should bring out this bishop. Um, or, yeah, I also don't know. Should I do bishops first or knights first? I think I heard some, you know, chess quote where it's like, knights before bishops, something, something. But a lot of the time, um, I feel like I get one of my pieces stuck. Whether it's my bishop or whether it's my knight, I get one of them stuck. It's all right. It's, it's not always easy to develop all of them, but you are right. Usually it's knights first, then bishops. And mm -hmm. because you said that you want to castle kingside, we're going to hurry up with these pieces first. Okay. So the question you asked about whether you should develop on both sides of the map or on only on one side, we're going to mm -hmm. we're going to want all of it. But priority to get out the pieces that are in the way of your castling. So you need to in every game, you will need to think on which flank, on which side of the board do you want to castle and get those pieces out first. And among these two, usually you develop the knight first and then the bishop and then castle. Exactly. Sounds good. Nicely done. I'm going to make uh, this move and I'm going to ask your mm -hmm. opinion on my knight development. It's bad because a knight on the rim is pretty grim. Or yes! dim, I've heard both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well done. Well done. Also, it's not defending any... Like, it's not defending a centerpiece, mm -hmm. and it's also not really attacking anything, but yeah. Very good job, very good job. So it's it's not an optimal move, but it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that it's a losing move. It doesn't mean that I'm going to get yeah. checkmated immediately. It's just it's not, not a blunder. It's yeah. just an inaccuracy. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So how would you continue in this position? Okay. Excellent. So you're developing the rest of your pieces. Again, we will go more into details of openings, but for now, we're just going to follow the opening principles. Um, I'm going to make more random moves for black. Mm. Okay, couple questions here also. Sure. Um, in this situation, I'm not sure whether I should just castle immediately. Um, and even if you had done another move, I'm also not sure if I should castle right away or try to develop or, you know, really anything. Castle right away when you can. So for now, we're going to okay. aim for very quick development on the side where you want to castle. And once you mm -hmm. have castle, then we can think about the rest of the pieces and attacking. But by castling quickly, you basically secure your own king. So it means that yeah. black will have less attacking opportunities because you've got these bodyguards. I call these pawns the bodyguards in front of the king, these three. Yeah, I love the formation. <laughs> it just makes me feel like I can not even look at that corner of the board until I'm worried I'm going to get back rank checkmated. But until then, <laughs> I can just ignore. <laughs> exactly. That's a beautiful pawn formation. And we will not touch them unless it's to give some luft. I remember Hikaru talking to you about luft. <laughs> Or the yeah, fluff. I, <laughs> I find it adorable, the fluff. To okay, give some but like it kind of makes sense, you know? Like fluff, like some yeah, room. Exactly. To, like, breathe it a needs some bit, room. You know? It needs some room there. The fluff. <laughs> so we're gonna create fluff later if needed, because you know a lot about yeah. backrank checkmates, and the fluff is very good against backrank checkmates. Mm -hmm. And you basically only do it once you see the potential for a back rank checkmate or do you sometimes just do it early um depends there will be situations um right now my position isn't like that but um if yeah. i had pushed this pawn and you would be worried about for instance this pin then sometimes you Ooh. want to push that pawn earlier so that you can oh. guard the square if you feel like the pin is annoying it's not always <laughs> bad that you allow it um, but my move was another pawn, so my bishop is not going anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. And I certainly wouldn't recommend that you push the pawn before castling. Um, so it, it's a priority to develop your pieces, control the center and castle. And a flank move, pushing pawns on the side of the board aren't li really in any of those categories. Mm -hmm. So you would only want to push a flank pawn if it's absolutely necessary. Okay. Sounds good. Later in the game, you can, especially if you want to chase away a piece, create fluff for your king or <laughs> prevent a pin. But until then, just castle. Make sure to uh, castle ASAP 
I'm gonna make mm -hmm. another move for black and see how you would develop the rest of your pieces. Okay. That just looks like such a funny move to me. Um... <laughs> what makes it funny? Pardon? What makes it funny? The move? I think it just makes it funny because like... You could have just done this and actually forced... Oh, sorry. You could have done this and forced my hand, but instead you're defending a piece that's already defended. Uh -huh. But I'm not even double attacking it, so I don't know if there's really any use, right? Yeah, true. This is another way of developing the bishop. It's it's not that common. I just wanted mm -hmm. to make semi-optimal moves such as this knight move. And this, this bishop development is actually not bad, the one I'm making here mm -hmm. for black. I'm mainly... Because then you can mm -hmm. take and you'll be more developed? Yes. Kind of? oh, yeah. Sorry. yeah, yeah. I would like to take back <laughs> on c6 with my bishop now. So if you were to take here... I would choose the bishop so that it stays mm -hmm. active on this diagonal. Yes. Makes sense. And then this is uh, under attack. Well, I guess actually it's defended. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think I... Okay. In this situation, do I um, bring out my bishop? Actually, I'm not even sure exactly at which diagonal or at which spot I would bring him out. Mm -hmm. I could also trade, but I do see how that favors you a little bit. So I feel like I can kind of just hold on to that side of the board for now. Yes, yes. It's better to continue with your development and uh, don't trade unless you have to. Okay. Um, in that case... Part of me wants to do the same thing that I did here, mm -hmm. but also... Um, if I get pressured, it makes me so sad to lose my bishops because I have such an easier time with them than I do with my knights. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? You prefer the bishops over the knights. Oh, yeah. For it's now. Good, it's I feel like know. once, I, once yeah. I develop a better eye for my knights, maybe I'll know how to better utilize them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they are a bit simpler. <laughs> That's okay. That's perfectly fine. So you have chosen a square for your bishop. All you need to do during gameplay, once once it's already at this stage, is to, of course, mm -hmm. always double check whether the square where you want to move the piece is a safe one. So that's one thing that we always look at before you place your bishop on g5. Is that a square mm -hmm. that's safe for your piece? Mm -hmm. um, I think so. Mm -hmm. If it's safe, then go for it. Okay. Amazing. I'm gonna make another move for black. And from here on, I'd like you to start um, adapting a kind of question answer mindset where after each and every mm -hmm. move of your opponent, we're gonna ask, what is it that my opponent want? What are they threatening with? Sometimes the answer will, answer will be nothing special. Like this move, what do you think of this move? What am I doing? What is it that I want to ach achieve? A move. <laughs> it's a move. <laughs> Probably slowly pushing your pawns up, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we will always ask, what is it that the opponent wants? Um, mm -hmm. Because there will be other occasions when the move is something like this, and then the answer will be, what is it that my opponent wants? Makes sense. Oh, obviously. The bishop, yes. My bishop, yeah. So we're going to try to practice this today, that you will mm -hmm. always tell me what is the purpose of my move. Sometimes mm -hmm. it will be something scary, other times it will be not. And another important thing in gameplay is that every move has its pros and cons. Basically, mm -hmm. every move gains something and gives up something. So for instance, yeah. when I push this pawn, what is it that this pawn push gains for me? What is it that's new? in terms of what I control with that pawn and mm -hmm. what is that I'm not controlling any longer. So you're no you're losing one of the defending pieces for this square. Mm -hmm. But you're gaining a bit more um control near the center of the board and you're able to attack these two squares. Yes, very good. So I have more control of these. No longer I'm controlling no, no longer I'm protecting the knight. And by opening mm -hmm. up this diagonal, what is it that that it creates on this diagonal? A pin. A pin. Very good job. What do Hell we do about yeah. pins? What <laughs> what are pins for? Um, I feel like it kind of immobilizes a piece. 
Mm -hmm. And it's also something that you kind of need to develop an eye for because I feel like naturally you would assume like this knight is defending this, 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 this. But actually once it's pinned, it's not defending anything. Excellent. That the perfect definition of a pin and that's why they are so important very good job yeah so if it's Learning your turn in this so game <laughs> i'm so happy you're this addicted to chess it's, <laughs> it's brilliant i would not have seen this coming is it because of the queen's gambit you think that you got interested in chess again um partially yes partially actually it just like gained a lot of um, I guess attention and exposure within not just the Twitch circle, but the larger gaming circle as a yeah. whole. And a lot of my friends have just been playing. And True. it made me realize that like, you know, I have so many gamer friends and we've learned so many games together. But this is like probably one of the oldest and most strategic uh, games that we can learn. And it's always just fun to take on a new challenge, do something new. I'm so happy that you're taking on this new challenge because I think you're really good at it. You're going to be very good really? at this. I'm so excited to improve. It'll feel so good. <laughs> you already have an impressive level again. I'm, I'm saying it because one week of learning and understanding this well, why you do what. So I'm going to keep testing you, of course. You have just described Yay. what this pin is. Um, yeah. What would be your next move? What do you think you need to do with the rest of your pieces? Or is it time to start attacking? Um, I think it would be nice to, I don't know if it's like getting my queen in action, but maybe more so like being able to do something with my rooks, mm -hmm. either connecting them, the bros, <laughs> the bros, indeed. Or, yeah. <laughs> or also I kind of struggle with my queen side pawns. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what to do with them, how to move them up properly. And the other thing I kind of see, I think, mm -hmm. is that if I move this up and I can... Oh, never mind. I was going to say if I can do this and create an attack here, but I see that this is defending too. I wanted to set up a situation where I'm forcing the queen uh, to take so then I can take, but I don't think that... Well, that, yeah, I didn't take into consideration that. Oh, but, but yeah, it's I guess excellent right now, that you're thinking mm -hmm. of these ideas. That that's already that's already a step forward, three steps Yay. forward. Yeah, because I see that this is not being defended by anything really. Amazing, because as you described, this knight is no longer protecting e7. Very good job. Yep, those are some great ideas. In terms of the rooks, you were talking about the bros. How do you think <laughs> you would want to set them up ideally? Where do you want each? Which squares would be good for them? Honestly, I really don't know much about rook setup because they're always so like tucked away. However, I do see that this file is a bit bare. Oh my god, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. No worries. No worries. <laughs> but um, yeah, so maybe I would want him here mm -hmm. if I don't keep my queen there. And the other rook? Um, the other rook, I feel like I usually tend to have him around here so he can still defend this area mm -hmm. kind of um yeah yep. but also here he's not really doing much <laughs> mm -hmm. so i usually just move him right there yes you can have them either on these two squares very good that would be uh, natural and when it comes to your pawns um so you have six pawns meaning that two of them are gone if you mm -hmm. don't have pawns on the DNC files, it's a potential route, a potential path for your rook because rooks need open files. So the more mm -hmm. open the position, the more powerful they become. So it's very true that you could go for, I'm just going to move the queen out of the way to place the rooks here. This would Sorry, be that's way. a vacuum. Hold no, on. No worries. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait until you get done. <laughs> the Roomba got stuck on something. <laughs> okay, oh. sorry, sorry, go on. <laughs> oh, I love Roombas. We also have one. And, and do you also give names to your Roomba and such? Like, we treat it as a pet. <laughs> Rue the Roomba. Oh. I'm glad that your Roomba wants to join the lesson too. Um, I'm sorry that they are not allowed at chess lessons. 
It's okay. Honestly, you could probably program a Roomba to be better at chess than most people, but maybe that's why it's not <laughs> Well, the future will be Roombas playing tournaments. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> So this is great the way you want to place your rooks that's that's one of the good ways and the other is what i was uh, what i was saying is that once you have pawns missing from some of the files those could mm -hmm. be potential ideal squares for the rooks too because then it means that there's no one blocking the way so the d file for this rook you were looking at this rook and how mm -hmm. there's no pawn in front of the rook meaning that it has more power on that yeah. file uh, but you have you have this you have made two of your pawns disappear you have given up two of mm -hmm. your pawns of trade did i them. move my queen here that was no sorry sorry that, oh, was, okay. that was just me <laughs> trying to to point uh, these squares uh to, for the rooks so this would be mm -hmm. one of the setups and and another way to bring the rooks give me another alternative and i'm gonna just oh, gonna get um, this out of the way one more time so yeah. that it doesn't bother bother you hikaru uh or hikaru sometimes i have problems pronouncing his hikaru name, yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ikaru had also explained to me kind of a concept of um, sort of like forfeiting a pawn in front of your rook. Like if uh, this pawn was here, if I could, I think, push this. I, I don't remember the exact sequence, but essentially pushing a pawn into a situation where you're forcing your opponent to take it or know that you will trade Mm -hmm. uh, for another pawn. I think ideally that is the situation where you're taking the pawn that's here. Um, so then it opens up a file for you. So you may only be trading one for one. Well, not yeah. this, but mm -hmm. in another situation. Um, but then you end up with a free or an open file for your rook, which is really good. Yeah, it's very good that sometimes you will push pawns in order to open the files. Um, once you already have a few open files, instead of pushing other ones to to open up more the position you can use the ones you you have right now so you already have access to two open files open for you it's not open for them right they are only missing mm -hmm. the c pawn you are yeah. missing the c and d pawns so another way for your rooks would be so this is one and this is natural and good mm -hmm. give me one more alternative and then we we'll see which one you like more um for both rooks choose two other squares or maybe some of them are the same. I don't want to. I don't want to give too oh, many hints. No, no, no. In. Okay, I also have heard just in general, um, if not the files that you already have open, aka the ones where you have lost a pawn, usually just the center files. The I center think? files, yeah. So for that reason, the ones you have picked are good. So I that's that's one of the best options. And the other one, I just want you to compare. If you bring the rooks to. A different like here, here setup. Yes, yes. So you can either choose the ones you first picked, or you can choose mm -hmm. these files, because those are the pawns that are missing from your position, meaning that you have more power for your rooks on those files. It's good yeah. to have them on the on the central file. So E and D by default is almost always a good answer. Mm -hmm. Most most positions this will be great, but here a tiny difference that can that can help is that the C pawn is gone and you were pointing at this pin. Remember you were, you were telling us about this pin. So yeah. imagine you could bring more pieces to attack that knight. And if the knight was attacked, it wouldn't be able to jump away because it's pin. Oh, true. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. think you would be able to so set up your like pieces I'm in a way? Uh -huh. here, but also my knight is kind of in the way. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not something direct, it's not something immediate, but if you had a rook on the C file, then maybe in the future, by jumping away with the knight, you would be targeting the knight that is pinned, black knight. Yeah, and then, and he can't take back. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I do something else, but yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of that trade, like if my rook was here and my knight was not here or something, um, okay, basically, I have uh, this like mental block sort of where even though I can maybe make a favorable trade on this square, mm -hmm. um, if my rook was here, if I took after he takes my bishop, it kind of sucks because now I don't have like a direct line to his king, if that makes sense. 
So I think I just saying... feel like sometimes it's hard for me to like throw my bishops away early because, you know, my snipers. <laughs> yeah, you want your snipers. And you mean that you wouldn't want to trade it because then you don't have pressure on the king, right? Because you mm -hmm. want the diagonal to be yours. Yeah. That's yeah. perfectly fine that you feel about it that way because it is a very powerful piece. This pin is great and you you don't really want to trade it. So you, I fully agree with you that taking here on c6 would not be something you're interested in unless you are winning a piece. Imagine if it was a free piece. Yeah, Imagine if you, true. at the end of the line, you would trade, trade, but you take one more piece than your opponent. Mm -hmm. Then you want it. Um, yeah, so I, I guess technically... If my rook was here and my knight was here, then that would be good because no yeah. one takes back after, right? Yes. And I get six and he only gets three. Yes. And even though you don't have the sniper anymore, but you have gained a full knight. You have gained three points. Mm -hmm. Very good job. Mm -hmm. If we want to set that up in this position, do you think it makes sense to try to focus on the spin, to try to put pressure on that knight either directly or indirectly? Um, kind of, but I also feel like trying to do this immediately from where my board is at right now is a little bit worrisome only because I feel like I have not developed that far up mm -hmm. the board. Yeah. Yeah. So what if we develop our pieces? You're going to stick to the plan that you want to develop your pieces. So we will need to bring the rooks and uh, the queen still has to find a better square too. Mm -hmm. um, but we connect it to the idea that in the future, maybe this is a problem piece for black. Yeah. yeah. So I would definitely love to... Well, do you think it's a good move at, like, at this exact stage of the game to move my rook here? I love that move. I'm so happy okay. that you are pointing at it because normally you move <laughs> the queen first to connect the rooks. That's that's the more natural uh, way. In most games, mm -hmm. that's what you will see. But here, I like the fact that you want to move the rook first because then it opens up all those possibilities of jumping away with the knight and putting pressure on this knight. Very good job. Yeah. Excellent. Nice. I'm going to make another one of those... Perhaps not the best moves for black, and I would like you to take <laughs> advantage of it. But after every single move of your opponent, we're going to keep asking, what is it that this move does? Are they threatening something? What has changed? Um, yeah, so you are threatening these squares, but there's nothing there yet, which is fine. Good. Uh, but now you no longer have the pawn supporting the knight, but you do behind the pawn uh, have the bishop. So mm -hmm. I'd still be trading equally mm -hmm. if I chose to do that. Very true. So this trade would be an equal trade. Would you be interested in giving up your bishop for this knight? Is this a trade that you think you want? Um, honestly, not really, because it is also developing your bishop at the same time. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, that's that's yeah. the perfect answer. The bishop is undeveloped, so you don't want to be helping your opponent to develop. And this knight, how do you evaluate how it's standing here? Pardon? How do you how do you see this knight? Is that is that a good square for the knight? You said a saying about it at, <laughs> at an earlier stage. No, no, no. It's pretty grim. <laughs> it's very grim. So when when you think about trades, always compare which piece you give up for which piece. And mm -hmm. if your bishop is standing better than the opponent's piece, then oh. usually it's something you don't want. Yeah, I get what you mean. But there will be cases when you end up winning a piece with it. So, of course, this is not like you have. You should never take a knight on the rim. Uh, but but there, <laughs> most of the if time... If it's for free, <laughs> maybe. But here, it's not for free, sadly. Oh, wait, we jump back. Are you moving here? Oh. or? Sorry, I might have. I think you wanted my to. My cat is on my keyboard. <laughs> oh, well, she has made oh. a very strong move. Sorry. Oh, did she? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that move. Can, can we go back? <laughs> you kidding? Sorry. Is it your cat making this move? Oh, oh my god, yeah, it actually what? was not me. <laughs> Grandmaster Cat, what, what, what's their name? Uh, I need to know the name Mimi. of Mimi. Mimi. Uh, it's a she. Woman Grandmaster yeah. Mimi. 
Well, I mean, at this stage, Grandmaster Mimi, what's going on, <laughs> Queen A4? <laughs> yeah, Mimi, she is quite smart, quite smart. <laughs> Goodness me, that's brilliant. I thought that was your move here, because that's... Well, now Mimi has given it away. That is a quite good move. Mimi has given it away. What would you play here? Mimi and Pocky over to you in this All position. Right. <laughs> Let's <it's>... go. <laughs> Thank... Dude, she's going to carry me through Pog Champs. Let's go. <laughs> Can you imagine if she's gonna appear always in the critical moment and make the right move for you? Just jumps up on my keyboard, slams a bunch of keys, gets me checkmate. Oh my god, I cannot wait for your game against XQC and the rest of the crew and Mimi oh taking god. over. <laughs> I'd be so good. My cat beat you, it wasn't even me. <laughs> They're gonna feel so intimidated. Oh, this is quite interesting. Oh, another thing is um, in puzzles, mm -hmm. I've seen so many situations where my bishop covers my queen. Oh, sorry, not like that. My bishop covers my queen going for some sort of a checkmate. Mm -hmm. um, but in my actual games, I have <laughs> rarely ever found a situation where my bishop is behind my queen. Do you get what I mean? Yes. So you, you have seen the queen bishop battery, right? When the queen is first yes. and the bishop is supporting it. And mm -hmm. this is this is a different setup. Why do you think this setup makes sense here? Why do you think Mimi's move is so strong? <laughs> um, it makes sense because you're kind of reinforcing the pin. So if you did take this trade and do this, uh, then you have check, mm -hmm. which is quite nice. We have a free diagonal to the king. Very good. So now you're um, attacking with two pieces, yeah. a knight that's protected by only one. And also you're protecting the bishop. Very good. You're reinforcing your bishop and putting pressure mm -hmm. on this pinned piece. What is it that black has to do here? How can black save that knight? Uh, he would need to cr also create, I guess, um, another defender, maybe by, mo maybe by moving the queen. Yes, it either like has this? to be the queen or, or the what rook. other pieces. Queen or rook, exactly. And as we established, the knight cannot move. So that's that's a huge drawback of this position. And that's why the spin is so incredibly strong. Now, both the queen mm -hmm. and the bishop on that diagonal are strong. I'd like you to picture, since you asked about the queen and bishop, can you visualize if the queen was on b5 and the bishop on a4? Can you swap them um, in your head? Would you be able to picture that? Yeah. If this is your queen and the other is These the two? bishop. Yeah, mm -hmm. In that, if it was the case... Could you win the knight? So if it were, if it's white to move, I'm just making a random move. You are able to take, right? Captures, captures, captures. And you have won a piece. You have taken one piece more than your opponent, right? Mm -hmm. But if this was my bishop and not my queen, isn't that not worth it? Yeah, so um, if, it, if this yeah. was your queen and your bishop is on a4, would you be able to do the same? Um, queen is nine, correct? Yes. So you'd be trading nine for six. I don't think that would be worth it, right? It would not really be worth it. So sometimes you will have the bishop first and then the queen supporting it from behind on the same diagonal because then the mm -hmm. bishop can capture and later the queen will take two. Later the queen can capture. But you don't want to capture with the queen first. In other positions mm -hmm. too, if you're attacking, um, Let's say, well, this pawn is perhaps not the best. Um, I'm just going to try to set up something real quick where you could take. Um, sorry, let me move this. Just ignore the moves, as, as Hikaru said. Sometimes you just want to demonstrate the position. Ignore how we got here. <laughs> so Makes no sense what we That's have me done. me my games. Just more the moves. <laughs> yeah. So, you don't really mean anything. <laughs> this is different because here the queen and the bishop are not on the same diagonal. But the, the queen is always the last piece you take with when it's multiple captures because it's the yeah. most valuable piece and if you start mm -hmm. the capture with the queen you always end up losing more than what you gain yeah and that's why sometimes if it's the same diagonal as in this position you want the queen to be behind the bishop because if you swap them then you are not threatening to take the knight at all you are not capturing it got it does that make sense here why it's better this setup the bishop first Absolutely. Amazing. I guess I was just like making a very sad note that, you know, the oh, puzzles that I sad. see don't you... show up in my games. 
Iman, I never have my sad. light square bishop <laughs> halfway through the game. The He's gone. He's I'm dead. just gonna ignore the moves. Ign ignore my moves again. I'm just gonna make something real quick for this because I, I want you to know that what you said makes perfect sense and it's gonna happen in many, many games. It's gonna happen in many games that you see something like this. This is... Mm -hmm. Please, everyone, ignore what I'm doing because this is not how you're supposed to play chess. But when you have the queen <laughs> in front of your bishop, that's a checkmate oh, situation. Oh, that is a checkmate. Right? Okay, wait. Let me just... Uh, oh. Yeah, oh, please ignore my moves. Ah, I just wanted I to get... I just wanted to show the queen oh, no, bishop I know. after yeah, the way I you just... sit in puzzles. Um, I remember... I don't know if you've watched Leslie's lesson. I haven't seen the that. full one. I've seen segments of it, but not the full one. Was, yeah, was it I similar think, to this, the position? I think she did like the London system, which I think has pawns. Sorry. I think it has pawns here. And then she had her bishop here. And she's like, the bishop is wearing a hat. <laughs> I remember so I was trying to one. imagine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just trying to imagine, um, I guess, situations where I just move uh, my bishop here instead mm -hmm. of to attack i think it's usually like the uh, anyways whatever uh usually yes. here to attack the knight mm -hmm. yeah, which you i can think i should play around too. with a little bit more yeah yeah it will depend on the position and we're gonna help you with openings so that you know the setup you aim for uh, but i think you were referring to this because in puzzles this is common that you are you're threatening checkmate like this and now again mm -hmm. if you do that mental exercise what if it's reversed what if the bishop is here where the queen and the queen is on the other square can you swap that in your brain if you do mm -hmm. swap them are you threatening checkmate with the bishop being the first on that diagonal uh not checkmate i guess it would be check and then he would have to move here and then you're in a predicament of sorts <laughs> yes it would or be some kind he of he could attack. also have his knight block mm -hmm. actually so technically it's not checkmate i mean you're threatening checkmate but it's not checkmate because he blocks and then you have to figure out what you want to do yes this is not a forced checkmate the opponent if yes. the opponent notices it they could prevent it still true yes got it but very important like you said that if it's the bishop on e4 and the queen supporting it then it would only mm -hmm. be a check so when it's yep. about attacking the king the queen bishop battery queen first bishop behind that's extremely powerful mm -hmm. and when it's a position when you're attacking a piece a pawn or a piece like this one then you want the bishop to be first because you can never capture with the queen as the first piece to capture because you will yeah. lose it okay then if I that think, makes um... sense I'll keep that in mind in situations where either I feel like uh, I'm on a diagonal where my bishop is first or my queen is first. If my bishop's first, I should probably look for advantageous trades. Mm -hmm. If my queen's first, then I got to move some stuff around or look for a checkmate. <laughs> yes, usually you will want to do a queen bishop battery around the opponent's king. That That's the main use of it. Got it. Let me do what you said, that I can defend this either with the queen or the rook. I'm going to I'm gonna defend it with the queen and see what she mm -hmm. would play here. I do see that if I move my knight, I'm attacking the queen. I don't know if that is the play or if... I guess it's not really because maybe you just move your queen here and you kind of evade that. So maybe a better thing to do was tr would be to try to look for another way to defend this. Oh, actually, that could also involve moving my knight here because I kind of do both things at once. I attack this spot and this, um, but mainly this, and I am giving this spot another defender via the rook. Amazing. So if you move the knight, you have both. As you said, yeah. you're attacking the queen and you're opening up the rook's file, so you're attacking now the knight with yet another piece. Very good job. Mm -hmm. You saw it without moving the piece because it's one thing to see it. I think this is this is. I saw it the last <laughs> when when I when I thought of um defending sorry the the knight and moving the queen to do so. I was like, yeah, but that's one knight move away. 
very good job that you do notice the night pattern. So you think that you are not good and good enough yet with the night moves and the knight's abilities, but you noticed immediately that, hey, I can attack the queen with this knight jump. And that's jumping toward the center. So that's a move that should be good for you regardless, because the knight... Uh, is the knight better on c3 or on d5 in general, without the queen Much hanging? better on d5. Very good job. So it's it's in your favor to jump there. You are winning mm -hmm. a tempo because the queen is hanging. And at the same time, the c file opens up for the rook. So everything is in your favor here. Everything to be is honest, hanging. I feel... Oh, sorry. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you. No, no, no. Not I at feel all. like even in my elo i mean it's crazy some games i'm like oh this truly is someone who's like three four hundred rating but for a lot of the time people like will see that this is two knights moves away um and they'll like move their queen accordingly um yeah i feel like my elo is so very hit or miss <laughs> and sometimes people can be quite good and see just as far as i can I think your elo is going to increase soon very quickly because I don't think it's telling us the right strength. It's Man, certainly not so. the right rating range. Because <laughs> this is not that simple. It's 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 not that obvious. So after this knight jump, once the queen moves away, what would you do here? I'd like you to think about this position. Um, again, okay. let's an analyze what is it that I have played. How does that mm -hmm. move impact the position? Okay. Um... So just to redo the math around this square, I would take, would take, would take, take, take. I come out on top, I think. Mm -hmm. So I think I do initiate this trade. Amazing. So we can take bishop takes, bishop takes, and then after these trades, you would capture on c6 with the rook. Very good job. What has happened so far? What's the material count? Um, I got six. Mm -hmm. They got three. Very good. Very good. So this is definitely... Cash money. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. This was a good investment. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. This is one of your options. What's the other option for the trades? I know that normally, so I was telling you how you take first with the lesser valuable piece, the, mm -hmm. but sometimes... Yeah, I was, yeah, was going to ask. I feel like that is definitely my reflex to just mm -hmm. go um, directly in terms of piece value and always trade with the lower value pieces uh but i have seen sometimes looking back at my games with the analyzing engine mm -hmm. that sometimes there are trades that are like there are pieces to start trading with that are less intuitive in a sense yeah um but end up making a more difficult situation for your opponent very good and this is where oh, we're gonna oh. i didn't even mean to do that Sorry, okay, but I think genius. that uh, I, yeah. I mean, uh, pokey. <laughs> I don't know if that's the thing. <laughs> I don't Is know. Like, I mis or... I've misclicked so much. I've I've literally I've misclicked, blundered my queen. This one time, I tried to castle, and instead, I just moved my rook from here to there. And then, because I moved it, I couldn't castle anymore. <laughs> That, that's an unfortunate one when you move the rook. Well, when you make Grandmaster captures like this, this is the strongest move in the position and you accidentally play is it. it? I, I want you to mouse leave the whole pock chance because you're gonna, you're gonna win it. <laughs> this is... I was like, is this your I mean, cat? to be fair, that is the only <laughs> other order of capturing that I could have done. So I was kind of just trying to look at it, but I accidentally just did the whole thing. Um, anyways, could you could you please explain exactly why this is stronger stronger than starting with this? Let's take a look. So the other one is perfect. It wins the piece and it would definitely most likely win the game too. I just want you to oh, see... Oh, is it because um, if you end with this, then you are directly... Uh, in a sense, pinning the queen. So if the bishop captures your rook, your bishop captures that bishop. Yeah. And that position, as you are saying, mm -hmm. what's going on there with that bishop and queen? Yeah, you're pinning the queen to the king because I noticed at the end of the other trade, 
Uh, if I can go back. If I do this, you do this, I do this. You have the option to not take it all because I'm not threatening anything. Very true. Very true. Ah, got it. And if it's with the other order, if you take with the rook first and then the bishop captures it, what you were saying is that now this bishop is attacking the queen and now the queen is the one that's pinned. It cannot move away, Let's right? Let's go. Okay, that's even more cash money. <laughs> even more cash money. This is the best investment okay, of our lives. Question. Let's mm -hmm. say I do this. And he sees that this, this pin, boom, you know, big brain, yeah. big brain. Um, what do I do from here? Let's say he just doesn't take or he develops elsewhere or he moves something or whatever it is. Um, what would black do to evade this? And what would I do to take advantage of this situation? Yes, let's take a look at that because that's that's a really good question. Of course, we want the bishop to take it and then we win the yeah. queen, but it will not always be the case. You are right. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to be ready to to face what if the bishop does not take. At the mm -hmm. same time, let's try to then think of this position from Black's perspective too, because you know the threat. You know uh, that this capture is bad, right? For mm -hmm. Black, that's bad. I feel like maybe I would just move my rook or something. Because, like, he can't really take anything. I guess if he does this, I take. And then we kind of trade like that. Oh, no, he can't take. I guess he would take like this. So, okay, hold on. This, this, this. What happens um, in this position, Iman? I'm still up. Wait. Can you visualize Oh, no, that? wait. Sorry, sorry. Okay, I'm doing that. So then... Oh, Wait, no, that's still, that's, okay, sorry, sorry. I'm thinking too fast, hold no, on. No, 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 take your so... time, take your time. This is complex, this is complex. You've just started he learning does this. Uh -huh. I would take. Give me a second. We're gonna try to do this blindfold. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let you put the rook here, but I want you to not touch the pieces. I want you to, oh, okay. to visualize what happens if you take the rook. So rook takes rook. Arrows or no arrows? You can. Yeah. <laughs> arrows always. You can highlight, you can draw anything you want. Okay, if I take, I'm pinning at the same time, which is good. Um, and then I think he takes and then I take and it's still really good. Exactly. So maybe if I was black, I would not do this move. <laughs> Yeah, so you've noticed that once the rook is gone, this renews the threat of the bishop <laughs> over the queen, right? So this is still yeah. very bad for black. Very good. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. so we have eliminated this as a move for black. This also seems to be pretty bad for yeah. black. Yeah. What do you think black can do here? What would be your instinct? What do you need to do? Also, what's the material count? Let's just do that again. Uh, the material count, what do you mean? Um, if we were is to take the material or... equal or are, are we up or oh, down? Oh, I'm something? up. You're up. I'm up. I think just with the trade earlier here. Exactly. So you have taken a knight and your opponent has a pawn for it. That is mm -hmm. three versus one. That's a really good deal. So we are up material. Even if you don't win the queen, you already are a knight up. So that's great. Of course, we want more and more material. It would be good to take the queen. <laughs> uh, but we are already leading in material. And the opponent's king is still in the middle of the board. That's something to watch out for always. That's why you want to mm -hmm. castle ASAP. Because your king has the bodyguards here in front and is super safe. While the opponent's mm -hmm. king is in trouble on this diagonal. So if He's this is... wide open. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and this is what happens if you don't castle soon. That's why we say castle as soon as possible. Because if not... There are positions like this, right? Suddenly, one diagonal, one fight. Something... I'd be sweating if I was black, actually. <laughs> That's the answer. This position is terrible for black. This is mm -hmm. basically a lost position. Peace down, and it's getting even worse. I'm just going to make a developing move for black with the attempt of castling. So if you give me time, maybe, maybe I could get to castle. But it's why to move. And I'd like you to think about this position for a moment and see if you can cause me more trouble before I castle. 
So if your opponent's king is in the middle of the board, you want mm -hmm. to attack them before they escape. Yeah, I think Gotham Chess did a video on chess.com, which I have in a tab but did not get to watch. <laughs> where he right. spoke about um like stopping people from castling. Um and I think I think in my lesson we also went over that how there are certain equal trades that you can do around the king, which feel equal, but also if you're forcing the king to take a piece, not here obviously, but in general, then you're taking away the opportunity for them to castle. Very good job. L let me just give a very quick because shout out to Miss Andrea and Alexandra Botas for the raid and for preparing me with this face <laughs> makeup for my lesson with Pocky. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to so have funny. the coaching session today. So thank you, Alex and Andrea, for making sure I'm going to look very professional and very serious. And Iman will be like, yeah, I have the best coaching team supporting <laughs> me. This is great. Absolutely. <laughs> You are completely right about all that, that when the king is in the middle of the board, sometimes you will go for trades that maybe give up a piece for a pawn just to get access to the king. Oh, you would do even a piece for a pawn, like an unfavorable trait to prevent um, them from... It depends castling? on the position, but if you, if with that piece sacrifice, you then get to give a next check and you gain pass toward the king, sometimes it's mm -hmm. possible. Um, normally... Normally, it's not that easy. So don't don't be giving up pieces uh, just for a pawn and such. Like in this position, taking here and all those moves aren't really what you want. Yeah. What, what you will try to do, instead of the sacrifices, think of it this way. Until the opponent's king is in the middle of the board, it gives you an even easier target. So we're going to try to get to that easy target. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Uh, mm -hmm. But we're going to try. So... These are positions where you don't really have the luxury to make natural developing moves, such as bring the other rook. Normally, you do want to bring the other rook too, right? Mm -hmm. But because it's an urgency to try to take advantage of the king being in the middle of the board, mm -hmm. what can we do here before this king runs away? Okay. And your bishop is still here, correct? Um, I've what just moved it, so mean? after uh, let's go back so that you you see the full picture because it I know it gets confusing with the back and forth. So we are talking about the position where we took on c6 with the rook. Remember mm -hmm. your and genius not move? Take, yeah. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm they, actually playing against you in my 400 rated game. <laughs> so they see it, and instead they do live. this because they're looking to castle. You correct? mouse live the best move in the position. <laughs> and that's the correct answer. Rook takes c6. So they will try to, yes, they will try to castle. What can we do here as white? Um, to, okay, it's tough because like there's two things. There's like this whole situation. Um, and there's also trying to prevent the, the castling. Um, but maybe we can kind of do both at once, perhaps. I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. What are some of your ideas here? What moves are you looking at? Talk us through your thought process. Mm, I do see that doing this could kind of put pressure here and still garner a favorable trade. But I also don't really want to move my queen because she's defending my rook. I see that my knight isn't really doing much for me, sir. <laughs> Um, I could throw him into the line of fire for a grand time. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe doing something around this square could be good just because it might force the king out, which prevents him from castling. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I see so far. It's good that you're looking at this square because if you end up capturing there without losing material... A move like this. Imagine you have a bishop there. Can black castle? Do you know? Do you know the exact rules for castling? Is it possible to castle or not here for black? Oh, you can't if you're going through the line of attacking, basically, right? Or is exactly. it only if you would end up in some sort of check? 
or checklist? That's the correct answer. You cannot go through check. So anything that's a in, that involves check and costling is a no no. You cannot Wait, cost us would through. Your, your king would go here and your rook would go there, right? Yes. So after costling, this is where the king is, and only the rook would be under the attack of the bishop. But. So you can't do this, or you can? You cannot do it because you need to imagine costling as a slow mo of the king dancing <laughs> yeah. here, dancing all the way to the rook, and then the rook, rook swings over to the other side. It's a very, very nice choreography but it <laughs> takes two steps for the king so the king mm -hmm. is slow mowing through this square and that square and then the rook comes to the other side but it means that the king would cross through a square where it's check and you cannot Got it would it. be illegal so if it's going through check if it's coming from check if the king is in check you cannot castle either mm -hmm. so um this in this position, oh no, I I should not. I was gonna show you the move. I should not. I should not. And I stop. <laughs> don't 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 show the solution. But yeah, this is going through check, uh, costling into check, from check, or through check. You cannot. Mm -hmm. So Got this it. would so be actually, a good move for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So doing this, I'd be preventing that, and he can't take because then I take, and that's a way to. Very trade. good. Very good job. So that would be a great move to stop Black from costling. That's perfect, mm -hmm. perfect thinking. Anything else that comes to your mind? Now let's try to attack the king or attack the king and the rest of the squad, the rest of Black's army, if we want to win even more material. Oh, um, there's also this, which is a check that I think would force... Either the king to move and not be able to castle at all, or the queen to take, in which case that's advantageous to me. Very good job. Yes, that knight jump, that check is extremely powerful. It's a fork. And as you said, if the king moves, it can never castle. Oh, I didn't even see this. That, that is quite nice. <laughs> oh, I thought... I thought... I was assuming, of course, because you see... I was side. looking at these two pieces, <laughs> but that's just a little bonus. <laughs> a little extra. <laughs> You know, you cannot castle and I'm taking your rook. <laughs> Poor Black. Not, you're not kind bad, of a, not bad. Yeah, you're destroying them. It's only 12 moves and now you're a piece up. You're winning now rook as well. You not gonna lie, <laughs> usually I do not end up in situations like this because I feel like I'm like... I don't, I, I don't know if it's like not ballsy enough, but also I end up in the situation where I feel like I need to like push these pawns before... I'm getting all my pieces out, especially for my rook to be all the way out here. Why? So you think you need to push the flank pawns in order to activate your rooks? I don't mean like I think that's right. I mean like that ends up being my like reflex in a sense, but I mm -hmm. think it's just like not enough confidence or not enough games played yeah. to know that this doesn't have to be my priority. I think you will soon have more experience to know when you push or not. But mm -hmm. as you said earlier for the rook, for the rook placement usually it's the center of fives so you may want to push the pawns in the center to open a five for the rook the flank pawns aren't that important uh, mm -hmm. these ones oftentimes you will not push at all these pawns or mainly in the end game when they could become a pass pawn maybe then you will push them but for now they are just chilling on a2 and b2 and no one really cares about them they are there but they are not quite <laughs> there so they are they are part of the team but they are on the bench for they're now they're just like some cheerleaders for now yeah exactly yeah. they're rooting us on <laughs> exactly and and it's okay to have cheerleaders we we want a chess you will win a lot of games by bringing all your pieces into the game we say bring all your pieces bring all your toys to the nursery is a chapter <laughs> in one of the my favorite books and i was like yeah bring all the toys <laughs> um but by bringing all the toys or all the pieces they mainly refer to the heavy pieces and the minor pieces mm -hmm. so queen rook and the knights and bishops the pawns are are important because they are the tiny little soldiers that can become a queen in end games mm -hmm. and they are also important because they support your pieces uh, they are important because you can open positions by pushing them. They are the ones you will trade first and you will open up the position by trading them. But they aren't usually an active member of the um, of the attack. They aren't the one giving check most of the times. Got it. So don't you know, worry actually, about not I pushing have like, these. I have mm -hmm. such a habit of pushing my pawns before anything else. Really? That I ended up in a game yesterday where I had two queens. <gasps> but... <laughs> Listen, if that's what happens once you push your pawns, 
Go for it, go for it, girl. I I heard you calling them princesses the before they promote. They are the princesses, and then they become a queen. That's great. It's a fairy tale. Let, let's do that. Of course, in an end game, it makes a lot of sense. But in the middle game, if you push them, it doesn't do much to the position. Yeah. So don't worry mm -hmm. about not touching them. Oftentimes, you will not until the end game, until a later stage. Got it. Got it. Got it. So in this game, you have you have spotted so many good moves, taking this check, and I would like you to discover one more thing. And for that, we're gonna use mm -hmm. we we're gonna think of clues. So mm -hmm. in order to spot tactical motives, you have spotted this. Um, we were discussing that that's a check, right? And you will mm -hmm. prevent them from castling. At the same time, it has the additional benefit of of capturing the rook next. So this is mm -hmm. a fork. So this is one of the tactical motives in this position. Um, in order to spot tactical motives, you will always look at the king. You will always look at the unprotected or unsupported pieces of your opponent. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the unsupported pieces are, or well, supported or unsupported, that's one category, but there will be a third category that's unfortunately placed pieces. And that third one is a bit more difficult <laughs> to understand but the more puzzles you solve, I think the more um, the more natural it will become that there will be certain clues in positions. When you look at this king, what other piece could be in trouble because of that king? What other piece could be in trouble because of the king? And you already I'm said one with this, the rook, that's a fork. Mm -hmm. So in this position, the rook is not... Uh, it's supported, right? It's protected by the bishop. It's not an unsupported piece. And yeah. at the uh, same time, it's the... unfortunately plays. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying that it's a tactical motive because the, you, you will always look at the king for clues. That's, that's mm -hmm. always key. And unsupported pieces or unfortunately placed pieces. And this is not an unsupported piece, but it's unfortunate because it's in a night jump for both yes. the king and the rook. So that's a tactical mm -hmm. motive. What other pieces here are unfortunately placed, in your opinion? Um, I think, for starters, the bishop is unsupported, sort of. I mean, like, there is the queen, but it depends if there's something in the middle and the queen is already kind of pinned. So technically, I think he's unsupported. Um, and the queen is only supported by the king. Mm-hmm which is not the best situation for milady. Not the best situation for <laughs> sure. So, um, es especially with my knight supporting this spot, instead of jumping to it, I could get the rook to go to it, I think. What happens if you move the rook up without moving the piece there? Can you see that? Can you visualize that and tell me what happens in that position? Um... I'm attacking both. I'm trying to play through if there's anything he can do, but I don't really think so. He so what are take. you threatening when the rook is here? What is your threat? Uh, I'm threatening the bishop and the queen. Very good. And I'm defended. The rook is protected? And... Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, sorry, protected. <laughs> no, defended, and... protected, same. Please, do whichever <laughs> term you want. They are uh, the exact and same, and I, like I just feel like there too. are terms that kind of like make more sense. Maybe I should try to use them. Protected, <laughs> defended, supported. They have they have mm -hmm. friends that they who help them. Anything you want to say that that's fine with us. Really, <laughs> pock chimps are always the best events for creating new terminology for chess because you that's guys so always true. come up the wooden shield of XQC and the 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 bro, the bros that that leslie came up with for the rooks i think this is great we are learning from that. you guys yeah. and um the rook lift but like when the bros are lifting together yes, so. <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> so feel free to say the way you want to because sometimes it's it's a better term than the ones we are using it's a definitely a funnier <laughs> one and a cooler sounding one it's a twitch term for sure yes. twitch brain term <laughs> exactly so the rook will be, uh, the rook will be attacking the queen and the bishop. You were saying. Mm -hmm. uh, what else changes in the position once you move the rook one square up, in terms of the rest of your pieces? I have a direct line of sight to the queen. Exactly. The bishop too will be attacking the queen. Can the mm -hmm. queen move away? 
No, because she's pinned. She's pinned. Amazing. Yeah. So if she's pinned, <laughs> she cannot run away. And that means big trouble, right? Yeah. My lady. <laughs> Very big trouble for my lady. Bishop attacking it, rook attacking it, queen attacking it too. Three of your pieces are attacking the queen and it cannot run away because She's the king would be in check. Very tough. Mm -hmm. This would be this would be a disastrous position. <laughs> Nicely done. Rook c7 wins the queen. And with that, once you the more material you win, the more likely that you win the game too. Of course, at the end of the game, it's still important to convert. But I think you know a lot about stalemates already. I don't think you will be the one <laughs> stalemating your opponents with three queens up. Okay, to be fair, I had to learn the amount of times that I did the um, queen and king checkmate until, like, it's a little, it's kind of counterintuitive a little bit um, until I looked up that video about, or I just looked up a video and saw the whole, like, just keep it a knight's shadow away. And then my life was so much simpler. A knight's shadow away. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it, it was so helpful. And then you just do that, and then you get the knight to a corner, and he's just moving left and right, awaiting yeah. his death. <laughs> exactly. That's so, so helpful, the, the knight shadow. I haven't heard that before, but I'm going to use it now in my own games too, to not stay It's so good, yeah. It was like, um, it was a term that was very easy for a newbie to conceptualize. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's literally telling you how close you can go without going too close. Mm -hmm. I like it. Amazing. This was the winning move here. I'm going to confuse a little bit. I'm going to confuse you here just a <laughs> tiny bit by going back in time. Because mm -hmm. I want you to think about this. If I defend a little bit better, if I don't step into this straight away, because queen c7 was not the best of moves. Yeah. Um, I still want you to find the best possible moves for white you said that you could also defend with the rook right that black could try to protect this i know this was moves ago but remember mm -hmm. remember mimi's idea queen here <laughs> <laughs> mimi with the amazing <laughs> diagonal <Grandmaster> mimi. <laughs> exactly grandmaster mimi has played queen a4 putting pressure on c6 let's say black defends it with the rook mm -hmm. how do you keep making progress in this position can you keep the attack going and especially we are focusing on this king which is still mm -hmm. in the middle of the board and this diagonal the pin how can mm -hmm. we keep putting pressure on that pin so the other thing i see and I, I assume putting pressure on the pin means bringing another attacker to this square yes i didn't want and to be that see... direct <laughs> no no it's okay <laughs> No, I'm just, I'm just talking through my thought process. <laughs> That's great. Um, That's what I, I want. See, yeah, bringing the knight here will attack it. However, um, earlier doing this also indirectly put the rook into an attack here also, mm -hmm. which was nice. So if I take this move, um, I'm losing out on that. You say that this knight move would directly attack it, the other knight move indirectly attacks, indirectly will attack it. Can you imagine mm -hmm. a combination of the two? Can they work yeah. both? But of them? I don't know which I would do first. It's a good question. Move order is always a tricky one to decide mm -hmm. on. Sometimes it's not that big of a difference which one you start with, as long as both of them are forcing moves. Forcing moves, we usually call forcing moves when it's a check capture or attack those are forcing moves it means that mm -hmm. you are forcing your opponent to react to your respond. move mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they have to respond so if you do this move i can't just go on with my life and say bishop g7 i call so everything is fine because the house is on fire on the other side of the board <laughs> it's on fire this is fine this is fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly this is fine <laughs> so that's why it's a forcing move because it creates an immediate threat of capture you want to capture mm -hmm. my knight i can't just ignore it or if i ignore it i'm gonna be punished for it mm -hmm. and and that's why it's great to look for forcing moves both of the moves that you have said are forcing because one of them is oh sorry i'm messing around booming as usual it, one of them attacks the knight with the knight and in the other case you jump with this knight and it's the rook that now is joining the attack but in both cases you are threatening to mm -hmm. take here right it's three versus yeah. two so yeah. in the in this case it's not 
it's not that big of a difference which one you choose because both of them create the same threat. You can choose the one you would go for. You pick. Um, to be honest, from a newbie's perspective, I would do this mainly because I see that this is defending um, my bishop over here and I would feel bad about leaving it. But again, I specifically say from a newbie's perspective because I don't feel like I've yet developed, I guess, like the mental calculations to know like it's totally worth it to just leave my bishop undefended to bring another attacker on this square, which it might be. But also, I feel like we kind of went through a lot of the things that would occur if I moved my knight here. So I'm happy to do this for like exercises uh, purpose or mm -hmm. sake, you know? <laughs> you go with the one you would pick. And I I think it it makes perfect sense that because you're just starting out with chess, you feel more comfortable when your pieces are, are defended because many of the tactical motives are due to the king unsupported pieces and unfortunately placed pieces. So the unsupported pieces are unprotected pieces. You don't want to leave this hanging in case it will get into trouble. Um, mm -hmm. So that I think that's a perfectly, that makes perfect sense, that reasoning. Let's start with, with the move you chose because also this night jump, again, if, if we ignore for a moment that everything is hanging and the house is on fire, <laughs> How do you see this knight? How do you play see the placement of the knight here? Um, it's nice because it's defended by that little baby pawn. Mm -hmm. Um, and also doubles up on the attack here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you're opening up the file for your rook, and at the same time, this knight itself is standing perfectly on d5 you know that it's all about controlling the center you develop your pieces toward the center and the mm -hmm. knight in the center is a beast it's a monster it becomes even more powerful because suddenly there's so many squares that you are attacking from here boom, boom. exactly uh, uh, boom uh, <laughs> boom uh many. boom you know it takes a minute but you know <laughs> yeah exactly you can color them all so it's a very strong piece in general in the center Mo in most games most positions the knight will be very very strong in the center if you get to if you get to jump to a central square and it's even supported so it's not just hanging in there in the air but it's supported yeah. then it's great very good job and now i have to deal with this how can black defend the knight so you're attacking it with three pieces and black oh, is only guarding with two question? of course um, always please always do <laughs> just uh, i kind of forgot i remember the concept of like an outpost i think usually a knight on outpost is that this or is it when uh, the knight is unsupported i don't remember the exact definition i just i think i remember it kind of like being out there and attacking things yeah very, very out good, there <laughs> very good question because it's so similar the position is almost an outpost let me modify it ignore my moves this is a bad move this is a bad move <laughs> This is an outpost. So it's the mm -hmm. same square. If you look at the knight and the pawn, it's the exact same. What changes, mm -hmm. we call it an outpost when that square is so weak. We call this a weak square because black has moved their pawns in a way that they cannot guard this square with a pawn. If you jump here with the knight, there's no pawn. The e-pawn cannot ever attack this knight and there's no c pawn so whether there's no c pawn or the c pawn has been pushed but it would mean mm -hmm. that it's a square from which you cannot be chased away by a pawn got it and so if like you you're have... really deep in enemy territory exactly it's like past their front line mm -hmm. past their front line and it cannot be challenged unless it's a piece it would have to be um black would have to get the king out of this pit yeah. and castle and uh, I'm just gonna make these random moves again to to show that <laughs> at some point black would need to try to challenge that knight because it's standing so well the the center I'm sure that you heard of the center but we mainly consider these four squares the middle of the board the most important part of the board yeah. if you get your knight here especially knights in the center are standing extremely well so it's 
it's a beast. You will you will see in your games. I think with with experience you will see more why it's so powerful. It it doesn't have to be something direct. We are not winning the queen just because it's here. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's very annoying. As you started coloring it, it has so many squares it's attacking and guarding. Yeah. So black would have to try to challenge it to get rid of it. But there's no pawn that can chase it away. And that's why it's called an, a knight outpost. Or an outpost. God. Usually outposts are for knights in general. Okay. Makes so, sense. Thank you. No, that that was a really good question. And please always ask questions because I, I know that I'm probably I have skipping many of them. through. <laughs> Always, even if it's not related to the position we are looking at, please do ask. Please do. Okay, got it. Uh, so we do this move for now? Mm -hmm, exactly. And this knight, even if it's not an, an outpost, it's very annoying to have it here. Because right now, for instance, black can't even chase it away because you are pinning that pawn. It's almost an outpost. It works the same way because this pawn is, is pinned. It cannot move. Mm -hmm. So they cannot chase you away from here. And also... As we said, the house is on fire. There's, there's issues. Big issues. Big, big issues. What can Black do here to not lose material immediately? Mm -mm -mm. Maybe bring another defender. But I don't really know who. Yeah, there aren't too many who are available for the job. <laughs> who could show up? Everybody's doing something. Yep. Um, <laughs> maybe repositioning the queen, but I feel like we've explored this quite a bit and how that is not the best. Um, you can't move her here because quite the blunder, I think. <laughs> um. So the queen doesn't you have too many options, You did say immediately. Right? Pardon? The queen doesn't have too many options, unfortunately, right? In order to uh -uh. defend the knight. Yeah. Not with the rook being there, especially. Mm. Honestly, I'm really not sure. You can move your king, but I feel like that's quite ballsy. I don't think it would be that. <laughs> you know, that you just boom. Okay. That's bold, I don't know. Pardon? That would be a really brave move. Wouldn't it be brave to just like, go yeah. out there and defend everything you with the king? You would have to be like GM Mimi brain to know <laughs> that that works out in your favor. Exactly. Very, very true that that would be perhaps a bit too risky. So if you can choose between the queen and the king, uh, defending it. We don't have any other pieces, right? If you look at the rest of the black pieces, yeah, can like any of them? Far. They're very far. Very true. Mm -hmm. So if they cannot make it, and black would really like to keep that knight on the board, or or not lose material after the trades, they have mm -hmm. to play. They have to play one I, of those moves. Yeah, I feel like you still do this instead of this, though, because if you do this, then you have to trade your queen before you can trade your rook. Can they move the queen there? Is that a good move for black? I don't think black's got any good moves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you look at the square though for the queen, is is that a safe one? Um, I mean, you still have two things attacking it. I feel like this is especially not safe because yep. the knight can just take? The knight can just take it, exactly. Yeah. I figure that's all you can really do. Yeah. So the only available square for the queen to guard the knight without being captured instantly is this one. Again, mm -hmm. putting it in that diagonal, which we have seen in the previous example, it's not a very fortunate location. Yeah. What can we do here as white? If you see that black is guarding that knight with three pieces, but the king is still in the middle of the board, this is still a pin. Do you think mm -hmm. we can we can increase the pressure over that knight? Is there still a way to keep going? That would be a path. Is it a safe path? Mm. 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 <laughs> uh, sorry, <laughs> I just started looking at some stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love that. Yeah, just random a good ideas. time looking around. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> um, I guess instead, if you can't go here, you go here. Sadly, you're not attacking the queen, but it is the safer path. Yeah, as as my, as the viewers were pointing out, you had the right idea with that knight jump because you want to attack the knight with yet another mm -hmm. piece, and you were looking for a double attack. You wanted something else to be hanging too, so that's great. If you can do it as a double attack, it's usually stronger than just a simple move to attack. Mm -hmm. So it's a good instinct to look for those. Sometimes, unfortunately, it doesn't work. But that's the right way to think about it. That's exactly what you should be doing. So very good job. Nice. So I guess we do this. Mm -hmm. And now, how many pieces of white are attacking already? One, two, three. You don't really count the other knight. Four? Four. Versus three? Versus three. What can black do here? Maybe shed a small tear. <laughs> I think that's the right answer. <laughs> to be honest, it's a quite a desperate situation. I don't really see any other pieces that can get all the way over there. Um, otherwise, could try to create a diversion, but I don't think Black can really do that either. Mm -hmm. um, could do this to put pressure on that knight. That's really all that I see. Um, you that is, that is the correct answer. Unfortunately, the situation for Black is so sad that there are no other pieces that can help that knight. And you also are very true about, very correct when you say that maybe some distraction to try to attack something so that they are targeting one of your pieces too. That's, mm -hmm. that's a good method. That's a good practical method to use in your games. Even if you're in trouble, try to create chaos. Try to make your opponent be busy about some captures and threats try to create threats in general that's that's basically um what you will try to do because we we don't always play perfect chess we don't always make the right moves and and you will still need to fight in difficult and bad positions too sometimes losing positions and you will only get chances if you try to make it the most difficult for your opponent to convert. So you will always, always, um, in losing positions or bad positions too, you will want to keep the game going and you will try to seek for uh, threats and captures and what can you do against their king because sometimes mm -hmm. they will miss those. So if you have that mentality, what you have just said, can black distract your pieces, can black do something, <laughs> that will give you lots of points from positions where you shouldn't really be scoring. So... Yeah. This is a great mentality that you have that you were immediately saying maybe they can somehow distract your pieces. So yeah, bishop trying to attack the knight at least, trying to capture it. Very good. Yay. Yeah, I'm quite confident in my um, below average rating and player pool. Like the Sometimes when I blunder my queen, I will just resign as, you know... Beth Harmon was taught to, but sometimes I, at one point I was just like, wow, that was a big oopsie. How about I just played out? And then later on he blundered his queen. So it's okay. You know? Amazing. I was going to tell you <laughs> that I love the queen's gambit. I, I, I watched it over and over again. And I think it's a brilliant okay. series, but I, as mm -hmm. much as I respect Mr. Scheibel, we will not resign. We, we will yeah. not resign because we're going to fight till the end. You have seen I those clips from learn. Pop Champs, the stalemate ones, when, when one mm -hmm. has a queen or more than a queen up and it's still a stalemate sometimes. So we're going to fight till the very end. That's going to be our mentality. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I believe. <laughs> yeah, but Mr. Scheibel is amazing. He is. So wholesome. I know, know. right? I love the series. I, I also wanted to say that I loved your look for, for the lesson with Hikaru. I don't think many people noticed. I don't know if Hikaru noticed that you basically dressed up as Belle. You, your, your choice of top, the, the look was so cool and so Beth Harmon style. I was like, I immediately thought that's why you did that. But it's different for guys, I guess. You are right. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad you noticed. Thank you. Honestly, that's one of the other reasons I'm quite excited for Pog Champs. Just have a reason to, you know, dress like I'm in the Queen's Gambit. 
You should go for it. If if you liked it, then I think the style of that show was amazing too. Just like I the... agree, it was one of my favorite parts of the show. Yeah, it's just so aesthetically pleasing. Exactly, she has such a good sense of fashion. Well, she started out not so well, but she learned. <laughs> we learned from our <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> we learned from our mistakes. Excellent. <laughs> what do we do here after your move, Bishop G seven? What would you play here as white? Um, I think perhaps you force the true... Okay, hold on. I didn't think it through, but my reflex is you force the trade, perhaps starting with the knight. Mm -hmm. That way you're taking away the threat of a potential capture. But I haven't done the math, so I could be wrong. Do you want me to try doing the math? <laughs> I like your explanation and sometimes you will not be able to do the whole mess so it's it's also okay during the lessons I will oftentimes ask you to visualize it because I want you to practice to to see the board in two three moves time how it will be that's why I do it but in in your games it's also okay to not see the full lines do not see the the end of the the variation because you already have said um, I'm attacking this piece with more pieces than that are defending so the capture should be good and you want to get out of this capture so this that's a perfect reasoning for me go for it okay i guess let's just play it out excellent now i either take it or mm -hmm. or i already have lost the knight if i take it how would you take i remember we spoke about doing this before bishop i think but um no yes 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 that's correct so you take with the rook uh, in this I... position you want me to take right yeah and if if i take the rook that means that then now you can attacking. take with the bishop excellent mm -hmm. um this position is slightly different because i may end up making a different move after rook takes if i don't mm -hmm. capture this what do you think would be mm -hmm. A decent move for black let's just go for survival skills here with the black pieces yeah makes sense i don't blame you um <laughs> <laughs> so i'm looking around and just going to try to explore options with different pieces so let's start off with the rook i don't take this because it's defended um i could take this um and you can't capture it and it's Wait. Wait a second. Wait a wait a wait a second. Um, you mean what I do, or is it your turn? It's good that you're pointing out the threats of white. So it's gonna be black to move, but I'm very happy that you started with what is it that white can do because those are mm -hmm. the threats that black has to deal with. So is this? Are you saying you can take the rook and the queen cannot take the rook? Yeah, so if it was white to move, would it be checkmate or am I missing something? Would it be checkmate? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> <laughs> the, this makeup looks makes my smile even longer, so I'm like, Pocky, would it be checkmate? <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't be intimidated. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure it is. It is! Well done! Exactly! Yeah. If I make a random move for black, <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I was like, wait, wait a second. <laughs> this it is looking is. like one of my puzzles! <laughs> Finally! <laughs> Nicely done! It would be checkmate! Exactly! Yay. The queen has pinned! Checkmate! Amazing! Let's go! I Amazing. love these, you know? Is this still considered a back rank or not quite because it's not behind three pawns, but it's behind... I think I would it's, still call it a back rank checkmate, not the traditional one, because you know the traditional mm -hmm. uh, with the three pawns is after. So you could get the back rank checkmate if you get rid of this rook, the the mm -hmm. white rook, and there was there would be no bishop, and let's say the black queen appears here on e1. Of course, this is not the kind of position where it would happen, but that would be the traditional one, as you explained. But mm -hmm. I think it's the same principle that the king is checkmated because it has nowhere to run, and even if it's not a pawn but the queen, it, it works the same way. That poor queen yeah. is useless. Mm -hmm. uh, that is quite sad. She's trying so hard to help. I know. <laughs> it's not working out. It's the most valuable piece and here it's completely helpless. 
<laughs> yeah. Sad. Well um, I guess the best way to kind of learn, well, maybe not the best way, but from what I see, one of the best ways to avoid being put in a situation like this is just to castle ASAP. Yeah. And that's why we're going to try to mm -hmm. castle ASAP. So if you remember the start, we, we'll come back to this. Um, so please don't be too confused. But when you asked me, <laughs> when you asked me earlier, let me see if I can go back to that position. Remember, remember earlier when you asked me here, if you mm -hmm. want to develop both sides of the map or mm -hmm. you will go for one or the other. Um, yep. Oh, I think here. At some at some point here you asked and whether you should put the knights out first or the bishops. I think yeah, at around it was this right stage. There. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, do I do the this this bishop? Oh, yeah, this bishop or start moving one of these pieces and bishops for knights. Blah blah. blah. Yeah. yeah, I remember. So our conclusion after this example, even more so, is Castle what is ASAP. Castle ASAP. So you need to decide on which flank you want your king, and once mm -hmm. you decided it, so here you pick which side again. Oh, uh, uh, king side. King side. You pick king side because our c pawn is missing. Um, their c pawn is missing too, so it would be quite an open fight toward your king. We don't want that. We want the bodyguards in front of the king. Uh, as Hikaru yeah. said, I think he told you that most of the games, if not every game in Pop Chance, will be castle king side. It's it's king a lot side. more common. Mm -hmm. A lot more common. So if you want to castle king side, it means that first priority, super speedy development on the king side. Mm hmm so this usually this yeah Ooh. knights go first most of the times um but oh, i th yeah. i think that's just simply more practical because the knights have less options you don't want the knight on the rim you know that and you don't want it yep. in front of your pieces so mm -hmm. basically it's quite straightforward that your knight stands the best here mm -hmm. but the bishop depending on how your opponent plays could come here here or here so you're you're waiting a move you're you're waiting just for one move of a uh, time duration to to see where would it stand better it's mm -hmm. it's practical to put at the knight first and then the bishop but yes you want this knight and you want this bishop somewhere on this diagonal and castle as soon as possible before you even touch the queen side you don't worry too much about the queen side until you get to castle okay sounds good to me um, I think maybe that's enough for my brain today, but yeah, I do of hope that I, I would love in future lessons if we could, um, yes. Oh, absolutely. also feel free to message me as much as you want. If you see any of my games on chess.com yes. or otherwise, or if you have any ideas for openings that you want me to learn, I will memorize till the end of the sequence. Okay. But I was just going to say, um, I do want to break the habit I feel I kind of have of after castling, feeling some kind of need to move the pawns. Because I've noticed in like this sequence that we've done, we really haven't moved them at all. We just moved the mo the more important pieces. Yeah. Um, but that's also left me kind of wondering like, when do I and how do I? Yes, remember that in most games, if you already have open files in the center, because mm -hmm. you wanted your rooks in on these files. Remember even, so the sequence I showed you in this game, in this simulation, was a direct attack on this diagonal that I wanted you to calculate. But even if mm -hmm. there was nothing direct going on, but just like, I don't know, random moves, um, mm -hmm. ignore me, I ignore what I'm doing. <laughs> no, this is this is terrible to, to <laughs> it's, it's very bad what I'm showing. So if mm -hmm. you just place your rooks on the open files, whether it's the E and D files, or the, in this case, you can have the D and C files because those are open. You don't have pawns on those files. This is mm -hmm. just a very natural setup. So you uh, you develop your pieces, control the center, castle ASAP, and then mm -hmm. what comes afterwards, you connect your rooks usually by moving the queen to somewhere safe. Yeah. You still want the queen quite... quite Even uh, just in... one step up is yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because that connects the rooks, then you can bring the rooks toward the central files, whether it's the C and D files, or you can choose uh, the D and E files, uh, depending on how you want it. Usually those are fine. Mm -hmm. And since you already have an open fight here, you don't need to push these. So think of these pawns. Most of your games, those pawns will be the cheerleaders, as you said. They are wearing <laughs> they are wearing Pocky merch. They've got the pom poms and they're screaming, Pocky, Pocky. They're there for moral they're, support. Exactly. They are there for moral support. So we're going to keep them there for moral support. Uh, but we don't need, really need so to cute. to have them move forward. They are, they are fine there where they are standing. 
next to the photographers and journalists, all right? They are standing there and the rest of the squad will win the game. Awesome. Okay, I will try that out more in my games. Hopefully Amazing. Well. Yes, and just please practice what we try to what we started with today. I know it's not that mm -hmm. natural, but always when your opponent makes a move, ask what is it that they're achieving with that move? What do they want? And mm -hmm. try to see what changes in the position because those can give you clues on what could be a good response to their move. Sounds good. Will do. Amazing, amazing. And for tactical matters, one last thing. I know it's a lot of information, but in puzzles, you okay. will notice that it's always the king, unprotected mm -hmm. pieces, and unfortunately placed pieces, such as when there's a fork against the king and the rook, mm -hmm. or when the queen was on the diagonal and you could win it. So yes. king, yes. unprotected pieces, and unfortunately placed pieces. Those, always look at them um, in any position, because sometimes you will notice that there's a pattern that can connect it with a fork, a pin, and win the game for you. So those will be the winning moments. We need to develop that alarm bell, and for that alarm bell, you need yeah. to look at the king, unprotected pieces, and unfortunately placed pieces. Okay, I'll try to build that habit. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, and I'm looking forward You're to our next session. You're such a good coach. I'm so excited to learn more from you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me, Pocky, and again, I apologize for this appearance. I hope that for the next don't. lesson... <laughs> Don't ever apologize to me. It's totally fine. Anything for content, you know? Anything for content. I can't <laughs> wait to see this done by my editor some with a title like <laughs> Joker Coaches Pokemon for Pop <laughs> Chess. It's gonna Actually, be it's gonna be headline news. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. But thank you so much for jumping in on the call. I didn't know that you wanted to have a lesson today, but I'm so happy no, that no you're worries. this enthusiastic. I'm so happy. We to will see have you. like a more formal lesson where I will stream also. And hopefully it'll be that much more informative that we already have this foundation built, you know? Thank you. I, I'm I'm really happy if you think that this has been useful. And I know it's a lot of information, Absolutely. so feel free to feel confused and always ask. Oh, always ask whether here on stream or or you you have my contact. We have been already in touch for a while, so you can always ask me questions, yes. and I will go through your games and let you know if I see anything else that you can improve. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Have, have a, a good lovely day. Weekend. And bye to all the chatters and viewers. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Thank you, Pocky. Have a lovely day and talk to you soon. See you. <laughs>
I didn't know that someone can be this this wholesome and friendly and at the same time funny when she comes up with those terms for for what this position would be like and and how she translates it to other game other games. So yeah, I'm very impressed. I'm very happy with my students. I promise to show up to the next lesson looking somewhat more decent, somewhat more acceptable. There have been so many questions in the chat on why do I look like this? And that's, of course, a very valid question. I asked that to myself too, but blame Miss Bono. I do this all the time. Like, I guess if I had known that I have a lesson coming up, maybe I would have tried to convince Tanya to to paint on my arm instead of my face. No. Um, I'm just I'm just happy that that uh, Pocky Pocky takes everything on on the light-hearted, entertaining side too, and and it's not like it's not like I do this to be disrespectful. Quite the contrary. I, I really admire her as a content creator and now as a chef student because it's impressive how much she has improved within just a week, and I can't wait to see how far we can we can help her how far she can get we're gonna try to help as much as possible hikaru and i are here to coach her for pop Chef 3 and there will be more coaching sessions uh, without this i guess but we're gonna have this as an emote we're gonna have this as an emote for you to remember why never ever ever <laughs> it's because i never ever ever <laughs> do dares with me i lose all my bets i feel like um, yeah, bim bag look, pink hair, unibrow. I used to have a beard too on some of my streams. Welcome to my world. Um, <laughs> what did you guys think of the uh, of the lesson? And what do you think about Pocky and her chances in Pock Champs? Because it's not an easy field. It's not an easy one. As you know, some of the players have been announced already. Hikaru announced a couple of the players. What do you think of the field and, and how do you see Pocky's progress? What do you think of her progress so far? Thank you so much for watching. This was streamed live on my Twitch channel where I stream full time, five days a week. Do catch us live next time or follow the highlights and the votes here on my YouTube channel. In either case, I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much again and bye for now. Until the next time.